and this is my personal account so if i do the same request here and i try to link my uh, other account to this account so what happens let's see that hey hi everyone welcome back to the channel this is asim and today i'm here with the second part of hacking oauth applications today we are going to see flawed csr protection and now easy it is to identify and exploit this thank you for the good response on the previous part hope you enjoy this one as well so in this one uh, we will be talking about one of the most common bugs yet it is most uh, missed by a lot of bug bounty hunters primarily because they think that oauth is a complex technology and thus it requires some complex uh, hacking skills so i'll explain to you why that's not the case and how easy it is to find and exploit these kinds of vulnerabilities so let me give you a walk through of the video first i'm going to explain you theoretically how this bug class is exploited second i would uh, take give you a demo on code figures lab where we would see how we could exploit this to gain access to administrator pan panel and delete a user and third is i would show you on a live website like one of my uh, subscribers i would say they asked me in the comment section that can you show these kinds of bugs on a live website where i replied to them that it wasn't possible because this might get illegal but since the website that i have chosen that's medium.com and since that's already protected so i could like go on and show that with that said let's start this if you remember the previous video i talked about the oauth request and that it contains a lot of parameters some of them being like redirect uri scope parameter client id etc etc one of these parameters being the state parameter and if you see a oauth request which doesn't have a state parameter there's high like there's a high chance that you might find these kinds of bugs so before we go on to where you can find these kinds of bugs let's first figure out what this bug is so this state parameter is like a csif token and if that token is not present there then that oauth request could be repeated by some other malicious actor so let's say there's this website where you could log in through your username and password and once logged in you could connect your social media accounts so let's say you go on and connect your google account and you have proxied the traffic through a burp so you copy this request where there is this oauth code coming and there is no state parameter you yeah you don't redeem that code like i talked about this in the previous video that these are one time code so you drop the request and you just uh, like save that url for later use and then you send this url to your victim so the if the victim is already logged into this uh, their account and once they click this url what happens is your social media account gets linked to their account so next time if you go to the website and you try to log in through a social media handle like let's say you link the gmail account of yours to the victim so so if you go on to log in through your gmail account you get an instant account takeover on their account because the backend system considers that okay asim shares google account is linked with this victim's account so once asim shares google sign in is went through it would automatically log me into the victim's account now let's see where you could find these kinds of attacks so any place where you find that there is a username and password login as well as where you could uh, like connect your social media accounts you could try get looking for these kinds of bugs now let's see how we would exploit this bug so let's start with the lab so here's the lab uh, forced oauth profile linking to solve the lab use a csif attack to attach your own social media profile to the admin user's account on the blog website then access the admin panel and delete carlos's account so i've already opened this in a different tab uh, let me start my burp as well so this is the lab now let me show you my account page here we have login option with normal username and password we also have a login with social media 
so what we are going to do is we are going to log in with the attacker's account then we we'll try to link the social media account of the attacker with the attacker's account itself as the request is going through with the one time code we would drop that request save that request for later use and then we would create an exploit which has this iframe and the iframe contains this url which contains our oauth code and this this exploit when delivered to the admin so the admin would open that exploit as soon as the page is loaded on their end our social media account would get linked to the admin's user uh, user account so the next time what we would do is we would log out from our account and log in with the social media thing and as we do that we would automatically get logged into the admin's account because we already have our social media handle linked to the admin's account so the prerequisite is that uh, the admin should already be logged into their account while they click on our link because obviously otherwise uh, there won't be any social media linkage so let's see this blog website uh, winner and the password is peter login attach a social profile so i haven't yet uh, switched on my burp because i don't know that i don't need to copy all these requests Now I'm switching on my burp so that I could intercept all the traffic here. So I use Foxy Proxy add-on. Uh, let's enable intercept is on so that we don't miss any request. So here, uh, here these AC six zero thing you could see that it is for the uh, OAuth account and not the Lab account. So see here we have the authorized screen. So as we click on the continue, we would see that OAuth code coming in here. very soon see this is the oauth linking part and there is this code so we would send this to repeater and drop this request because we don't want the social media account to be linked to the attacker's own account we want it to be linked to the admin's account the victim so let's go to this and go to the exploit server uh, where is that uh, let me switch off the enter how oh. no way back to lab home go to exploit server and we need to have this request so we are copying this url so this is a one time code uh, as i already talked and showed you in the previous video as well so what we are going to do is we are going to craft a exploit here i frame so you might ask why i am using i frame so we are using i frame because Uh, we want this to be automatically loaded once they visit our website so the uh, like a real life scenario could be that you might uh, send them a email with this hyperlink to click there once they click there like the browser gets redirected there so let's store this and now deliver exploit to victim now let's log out from our account and try logging in with our social media account so if everything went smoothly our social media account should get us to log in through the uh, admin's account or our victim account see you have successfully logged in with the social media account and we can see the admin panel here and that's because we are now the admin and let's see see this is the administrator so our social media account is linked to the administrator now we just need to delete this account and we are good to go with the lab on the relations is all the lab so that that was pretty simple if you see and let's see it live in action where uh, we would see that a particular website which is already protected so let me show you the medium account So here on the medium account so there are two different accounts one is my personal account and there is this test account so you could see there is this option to connect to twitter so let me enable my intercept on now i'm going to go to connect to twitter thing so you authenticate twitter medium.com is uh, requesting that so you could see that from api twitter.com we are getting this oauth token so a few things to notice here is that this is the medium.com link and this is the oauth callback thing that we saw in the previous lab so here the, there is the state parameter which has this random string and then there is this oauth token so let's say if i copy this uh, 
I drop this request. I send it to repeater. Now I have this uh, URL copied. So let's say I copied that, right? And this is my personal account. So if I do the same request here, and I try to link my uh, other account to this account, so what happens? Let's see that. Sorry, we had a problem while trying to connect your Twitter account. Please try again. So that was thwarted, or the attack was thwarted because there was a state parameter there. And that's what didn't allow the attacker, like the, my second account, to link to my this victim account, which is my original account. So if that wasn't the case, the attacker would have linked the, their Twitter account with my account and they could have logged in through their Twitter to my personal medium.com account. Another thing that you should try, which is not mentioned in the lab, is that try to remove that state parameter as a whole and then see whether that request still goes through. Because in many of these cases, there's this like uh, kind of superficially the state parameter is added, but which is not actually checked. So you could do that as well. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this and learned a few things. If you liked it, make sure you press the like button, subscribe the channel and share it with as many folks as you think this might be helpful for him. And stay safe, stay home. Have a nice day.